continuity. So there's kind of two parts to continuity. One is just like a, um, a non-technical understanding of what it means to be continuous. We'll hopefully get that figured out. And then we'll look at the, the sort of technical definition that we have to use in calculus. So first, sort of the informal uh, considerations of continuity is or the question you ask is can you draw the graph without lifting your pencil right, obviously that's not a very calculus definition but we'll start with that so can you draw a graph without lift in your pencil. So let's look at some examples. So is the graph continuous, meaning there's nothing, there's no jumps, there's no holes, like it's continuous. So how about that picture, that graph, is that continuous? Okay, see some nods. Yeah, I, I drew that without lifting my pencil. That's a yes. Let's try another one. How about that graph? No, there's an asymptote there. Although, just because there's an asymptote doesn't mean it's not continuous. Give you another example here. Um, how about that graph? Is that graph continuous? Yeah, that graph is continuous. So there's an asymptote, and it's even at the same spot, but because it doesn't start up again on the other side. It's like there's only one branch of it. That one is continuous. Yeah, nope. A hole is not continuous. Although every year someone like tries to argue, they're like, well, I can draw a, a hole without lifting my pencil, right? You just go around and around like that. Yeah, that's not, that's not what we're talking about. So no, a hole is not continuous. How about a graph that looks like that? It's got a sharp turn in it. Still continuous. Now, there's other problems with this <coughs> that we'll talk about later, but it's still continuous. The fact that there's a sharp turn there uh, will present problems for us later, but it's not a continuity issue. It's a slope issue. Um, maybe this is obvious, but I'll say it anyway because it matters a lot in here because we have to, for a lot of the properties we use, the, the picture of the graph has to be continuous. It doesn't work if it's not continuous. So we can just say right up front that all polynomials are continuous. So y equals x cubed minus 3 y equals 2x plus 5, y equals 7 thirds. Like all of those are polynomials, therefore they're all continuous. I mean, which is helpful because you might not know what, especially if we added some weird stuff on the end of this. Right, I don't know what that graph looks like x to the seventh, x cubed, like that's a weird graph. But because it's a polynomial, I know it's continuous. All 
right, there are three types of discontinuities. Discontinuity. Spelling, spelling lesson today. Three types of discontinuity. Uh, and you've seen all of these, all these pictures you've seen before. Now we're just sort of classifying them. <coughs> A point discontinuity. Here's a hint. You already you know a, a name for that. So discontinuity at only a point. That's a hole. So point discontinuity is a fancy way of saying there's a hole there. So whatever that graph is, we would say there is a point discontinuity at x equals c. There's a hole at c. A jump discontinuity How to describe it other than to say it's a jump. You've seen this on graphs before. Right where there's a jump at C. It's not continuous at C. At X equals C. And then last lastly, an asymptote. Although be careful, because not all asymptotes lead to discontinuities. So if there's a graph on each side of the asymptote, then you had to jump. Well, I shouldn't use the word jump. You had to get over the asymptote. You had to be discontinuous at the asymptote. Now, these are classified as two types. Well, there's, there's three different ones. These two, the jump and the asymptote, actually, let's let, let me name the first one. The point discontinuity, we also say is a removable discontinuity. So removable is the, the fancy word. You can think of it as, as fixable, right? If I just fill in the point, then it's continuous, and the rest of the graph stays the same. The other two, I mean, if you wanted to fix the other two, you'd have to really change the graph to like somehow make those connect or somehow do away with the asymptote. Like you, you can't really fix the other two. Those are not removable discontinuities. You're stuck with those. The other reason it's called removable, do you remember what in an equation leads to a hole? Factors that cancel. So in fact, we'll just stick with the x minus c. If there was x minus c top and bottom, along with some other stuff, then we could remove the x minus c's and we would not have the hole anymore. So it's still a discontinuity, but it's removable. And so you, you know, you've kind of done some of this stuff before, but we're putting new names on it. All right, that's sort of the the informal part of of continuity. I guess we should have called that Roman numeral one. All that's informal. I mean, there's definitely some math stuff in there, but that stuff you know and you've seen and I think kind of makes sense. What is new or different or the formal part of continuity 
is its definition. And it's, you don't have to know a whole lot of definitions in most math classes, really. And even this one, you don't have to know many. But you do have to know this one. Like the AP test has been known to ask, use the formal definition of continuity to discuss the continuity of whatever. So you have to know um, the formal definition of continuity. <coughs> A function is continuous if three things are true. One, f of c, whoops, a function is continuous at x equals c. So this works for like one point at a time. f of c exists. Right? If the function doesn't exist there, it can't very well be continuous there. So I think that's an easy one. Number two, the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. If you look back at some of our things that were discontinuities, like the jump and the asymptote, the limit doesn't exist there and it's not continuous. So we're putting some some formal calculus words on what I think already made sense, like a jump, that's not continuous. The calculus reason is the limit doesn't exist. An asymptote, not continuous because the limit doesn't exist. And then the last criteria is that the limit as x approaches c of f of x, which is what number two was about, is equal to the function. So let's look at a couple pictures and see if we can figure out why they are not continuous. So a graph with a hole, but also with a function at that value at x equals c. So criteria one, does f of c exist? Yeah, it's that dot up there. OK. Criteria two, does the limit exist? Uh-oh, this was on the quiz, right? Yeah. The limit exists. The limit is, is whatever this value is. So the function is 6. The limit is 4. So criteria 1 and 2 were good. But criteria 3, the limit and the function aren't equal. So discontinuous because the limit doesn't equal the function value. That's the calculus reason it's not continuous. I mean, you can look at it and say, obviously, it's not continuous. There's a hole there. But you got to be calculus specific when you answer some of these questions. Yes, sir. On our homework or something, if you were to say discontinuous because there's a hole, would it be kind of wrong? So, no. Except that I'm going to specify on three of them, you do the formal three-step proof. Okay, so that's a really good question. Um, people at home, the question was, it, basically, how much of this, what do I need to say if it's discontinuous? So it, unless it specifically calls to use the three-step proof or three-step definition, if you've got this, you can just say, uh, yeah, it's discontinuous at C because there's a hole there. That's fine because that tells me you know what you're looking for. But there will be three questions that want you to do the formal process. All 
All right, the book phrases it kind of oddly when it, on some of these questions. And it goes to your question about how do I answer them. The book doesn't do a good job of specifying how it wants you to answer because it says, the directions say something like, discuss any points of discontinuity. It's like, well, discuss? What do you want me to do? Like, write an essay about this problem? Like, why there's a hole there? Like, what do you mean, discuss? Um, but the best way to do it is to think through the three-step proof. And if it, I'm going to ask for one of them, or for a few of them to be the three-step proof. If it doesn't ask for it specifically, you don't have to do it. But that should still be your thought process. Does the function exist? Does the limit exist? Are they equal to each other? So let's say f of x equals x plus 1 over x squared minus 1. Well, let's factor the bottom. This is definitely pre-cal here. Um, so what's going on at, at x equals negative 1? There's a hole. So that means it's discontinuous. What about at x equals 1? You remember what that makes on the graph? <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> Factors at the bottom that don't cancel? Oh, it's been too long, I guess. A vertical asymptote. So that would have two points of discontinuity. One's a hole, one's a vertical asymptote. By the way, this is definitely related to, um, in pre-cal, domain, right? Anything in the bottom, anything that made the bottom zero was a problem, and it was either a hole or a vertical asymptote, and we spent a couple weeks on that. Now you can see why that was part of the pre-cal lesson or curriculum. All right, g of x equals the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's see. We did one kind of like this the other day. We square both sides, move things around. Turns out it's the top half of a circle. So... Are there any points of discontinuity on that graph? Right, you're, the answer is no. Let's be a little more specific. Let's say it's continuous on negative 1 to 1. So it's not really discontinuous elsewhere. It just doesn't exist elsewhere which I guess means it is discontinuous at 2 and 3 because the function doesn't exist at 2 and 3. Uh, all right, last one. Let's use the three-step proof. For continuity at x equals 3. where f of x equals piecewise function. f of x equals 2x minus 1 when x is greater than or equal to 3, and 8 minus x when x is less than 3. I'm just going to call them A and B so that when I say which one are we plugging into, we'll know what we're talking about. All right, so the three-step proof. The function exists, the limit exists, they're equal to each other. And we're talking about at x equals 3. So f of 3. So how do I find f of 3? Yeah, 
plug it into A. X equals 3. So I'll use A. 2 times 3 minus 1. 6 minus 1 is 5. Okay, so good. The function exists at 3. We're a third of the way there. Number 2, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Trick question. Am I going to use a or b to help me solve part 2? Am I going to use part a or part b? to help me figure out the limit. And again, that's kind of a trick question. I am going to substitute into which one? And I warned you it's a trick question because I need to check 3 from the left and 3 from the right. So how do I check 3 from the left? Well, I plug it in A or B. B, because I'm a little less than 3. So 8 minus 3 is 5. From the right means I'll plug it into A. 2 times 3 minus 1 is 5. So if they have the same left and right limit, then they're like going to the same spot. There's not a jump there. So two is good. Three is always the easiest one because you've already done all the work. You're just looking to see is statement one equal to statement two, and it is. But you do have to say it. F of three equals the limit. But again, that's the easy one because you've done all the work already. You're just looking to see is statement one equal to statement two. Um, don't forget to give the conclusion, yes, this is continuous at x equals 3. All right, page 79, 27 to 53 odd, 61 and 63. And I want the three-step proof for 49, 51, and 53. The bell is about to ring. 27 to 53 odd, 61 and 63, three-step proof for those three. And again, uh, it's so frustrating on the test, you can start packing up. But on the test, when I ask for the three-step proof, and there will be at least one of those, where people do the three steps, they do everything right, they think about the limit, the function, and then they forget to say, yes, it's continuous, or no, it's not. You, know, you made all the argument perfect, but give me the conclusion.